Have a look at that! Oh, it's screaming. That is unbelievable. Oh, a nice hit. Well done! Oh. Look at that! Not a bad sight! Oh, mate. At Fishing WA, we like to mix it up and target a variety of species. Today we're launching from Woodmers Point Boat Ramp, which is located just south of Fremantle. Helping us out today is Mark Camilleri from Fremantle Octopus. The aim today is to check our recreational octopus trigger traps and hopefully get a tasty feed. With the easterly wind just starting to back off, the day can only get better, so let's get into it. Neutral. Hard right steering only. All right, good work. But you need a hand there, Ryan. Mate, I'm not used to all this hard work. I know, <laughs> you always get me to do it. You lie to everyone and says, oh, Harry, don't do anything. <laughs> That's it, work it, work it, come on. <laughs> For all those people that reckon I don't do anything. Apparently, you don't, don't. handle fish, you don't do any work. <laughs> That's it. Oh, must have been I was impressed. We filmed down at Manja recently and you uh, rigged up all the pots and did all the bait. That's the last time I'm doing it here, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, give me a hand, The wind's starting to back off, mate. It's getting oh. better and better. Oh, they are heavy. They are. And what we'll do, let Ooh. that water drain out. We can go this side here. Let that water drain out. I think the water was heavier than the pot. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like that. <laughs> Well, one door's triggered, one's not, so you just never know. Let's have a look, you see inside. Beautiful octopus. I'll uh, get out of there, I'll give you a close look. I was going to give you a close look, but he's, he's gone, he's hiding. He's down there. Yeah, um, yeah, no, that's all yours, man. Oh, mine? They okay. They don't bite, do they? No, they, they don't <laughs> bite, but they do hide in this situation. So what I do is open up the front door. So two exit points, one here, one here. And then I open it up, put it onto the little knobbly bit at the back. It keeps that open, because the crab now has been pulled out by the Oki. And is he going to come out? No, so what you do is basically rock salt. Rock salt, or you can mix basically fresh water and salt uh, together. This stuff here, they hate it. Now you might be thinking it's crazy. They live in salt, why would they not like salt? It's too much concentration on the skin. So watch this here. I'm gonna grab this, pinch this. He's gonna hiss a little bit, not like it, but watch this. Bit of salt. And, there he comes. There he is. Come here, get off that. Oh, good, Harry. Hey, hey. <laughs> hey gentle, <laughs> gentle. Hey, say, I've got a nice tight grip on him. He's not liking it, but what you do basically is you basically, if you want to cut the head off, which is obviously a must with these sort of octopus, is you slam them down on the deck, basically, get the actual head up, basically cut it off with a knife there, put it in an esky on ice, keep them fresh. There's my other pot over there. How's this, Carnac Island, octopus traps, going off. To find out more information about Fish and WA or just want to ask a question, like us on Facebook. <laughs> All right, Ryan, we need to put this one back in, mate. Uh, so what's the best ground to do it, mate? Well, I mean, mix it up a little bit, but generally you don't want just straight sand or hard ground. You want hard ground, broken ground, weed. So that's so important. So often it's not what you think, big structure. Not for, for cray pots, no worries, but yeah. not for occupies. A lot of times they're hiding in very small little crevices. So yeah, weed, shale, broken ground. From 10 metres of water out to, say, 30 metres of water is uh, where most guys are doing it. 10 minutes is good, man, it's just to pull up. <laughs> yeah, well the commercial guys, they're lucky. They've got, they got the winch, we've got yeah. the guns. Oh, I'm the winch. <laughs> <laughs> the winch. winch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, mate, what we'll do is we'll, uh, actually I'll grab that rope. All right. If you want to plonk it in, I don't mind this little spot. Okay. And oh, in she goes, mate. What I do is I just normally just drop it off the edge like that. Yep, slide it off. Yeah, just push it in like that. It will self-right itself. I'll give you a rundown a little bit later about basically the rope and the float, the rules and regulations. In the meantime, that pot is going down. Oi, Harry. Yep, there it is. Oh, I can almost reach that one, mate. <laughs> the boat work is fantastic. All right. Surprise. You didn't have to do anything. <laughs> oh, 
There you go. I've you got can do the hard work, mate. I've got a feeling that I've actually got to do this. That's why I'm probably staffed to do all this sort of stuff. <laughs> nah, it's not that bad. I mean, if you've, got, if you've got a pot winch, like for your cray pots, makes it nice and handy, which I have. We've got the stress-free one, but we decided today to show you that we do actually do a bit of work and in shallow water you can do it by hand, but I will say the new stress-free cray pot hauler is ideal for oki pots and cray pots. That's all right. God, I was gonna do it all. You look like you're getting tired. Well, I'm trying to talk to the camera at the same time. Give me a break. Mate, you can talk underwater. You can talk while the camera's on. How do you, what do you say? <laughs> hey, will tell you that I can talk underwater. Oh, and Jesus. A bit of help, mate. This is full of water. Well, uh, unless it's full of 100 hockey snow. <laughs> Watch out for the water. Down. Yeah. Empty. You can sort of see maybe back at home a bit hard, but basically there's a lot of sand and sort of grit inside there, so in the right area. But unfortunately, no octopus. But what we'll do basically, reposition it, put it back in the water. You don't always get fish, you don't always get ockies, but uh, mate. Man, that's just disappointing. Yeah. That was hard work, that. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a few pots, which is great. So, talking about pots, obviously, you've got your uh, certain amount, which is basically, you can have, this one here is two trigger traps on a frame, it's deemed one pot. So you can have three pots per license. So you need to have your Cray license or your RFBL license. And on a boat, you can have maximum nine. So it's nine of these with three licenses as well, but. And so, how many Ockies can I have? <laughs> I have. Did you get well, it? <laughs> I mean, I think the rules and regulations, I think, is about 16. But uh, obviously, the trigger traps normally get a little bit less than that. Yeah. But that's more than enough. So they certainly uh, pay for themselves. I mean, generally, I think they retail at just over 200 bucks. But you look at a cray pot, what they cost. Yeah. And the cost of uh, premium octopus now doesn't take long before it pays itself off. All right, mate. Well, I'll reposition. You drop back in. All right. And that's just it's... sliding it off, isn't it? Yeah. That's it's, good. It's the easy part. <laughs> And uh, we've got Mark Hamilleri, so uh, here today. So he's got a few of his pots as well. So hopefully his one might produce a little bit better than mine. Yes, double head will be good. All right, let's go. Okay, neutral Harry. Yep. Doing nothing as per usual behind the wheel. Exactly. This time I've actually got to do a bit of hard work. This is actually quite heavy, but maybe got something in there, a lot of water. Actually, I will get you to give me a hand. Actually, not free. Mark, can you give me a hand, mate? Actually, give us a hand, thanks, mate. And bring him over. Hold him there. Thanks, Mark. Well, your pot's got two uh, doors down. I hate to say it. Here's Pots, produce more Oki. We'll uh, open up the trap door and give you a close look. What have we got here? Mate, Ooh. not bad size. Mark was saying some of the Oki's they get are like two kilos plus, often a lot of small ones, doesn't matter. When it comes down to marinating, they all taste delish. And look at that one, you got that one there? Yep. So make sure this one doesn't fall off. And that one right there. Oh, actually, it's a bigger one. Look at that. It's amazing these octopus actually don't bite you. You're not hurting them at all, but they will move around a fair bit. Look at that. How good is that? Best thing about these octopus is very sustainable. I was talking to Mark here and he's saying basically that one, they live for around about say 12 to 18 months. Two, the fisheries are very, very happy with what basically free mineral octopus are doing as far as the commercial aspect. They're taking such a small percentage of what's out there. Very sustainable. And also the trigger traps are very good because they only are species specific. So only octopus can go in there, nothing else. So no fish, no nothing. So very sustainable. The trigger traps work. Fremont octopus know their stuff. How good is today? The wind's backing off. Yeah. I'm loving my job. For Rat Fishing WA TV series, you've seen us use the Extreme gear. Let me show you just some of the products. We've got the Extreme PE braid, very well priced. From brim braid all the way through to Jewfish, awesome stuff. We've got the extreme hooks. From skippy size all the way to jewfish, snapper, you name it, ultra sharp, ultra strong. We've got the metal slice. Everyone loves metal slice there. From herring all the way up to tailor salmon size, great product. You always need leader, the extreme leader. 
from low poundage all the way up to the heavy stuff there for offshore deep water fishing. If you're chasing dewfish or snapper, bolch and groper, the octo jig and the metal jig, all different sizes, different colours, this will get you a lot of reef fish and out of the rods. The Fish WA Extreme range is huge, from squidding to bottom bouncing to trolling to poppering to jigging, you name it, we've got it. Very well priced, ultra light. Check them out at your nearest Extreme Tackle retailers or check them out online, extremetackle.com.au. Now, the most important part, the ins and outs of the recreational octopus trigger trap. Now, it looks complicated, not really. Basically, you've got two trigger traps on a frame deemed as one pot, so one pot. Basically, right now, you've got the actual, the doors open right now. An octopus base is gonna come in. Why is it gonna go in there? One, it's shelter, but two, there's an LED light inside a crab, which I'll show you very soon, admitting a pulse light. So there's a crab on the other side there, right internally. Now, what happens normally, the octopus will go inside, Grab the crab, pull it, and straight away, what happens, you can see here, it shuts. Straight away, it's trapped. So, what I'll do now, come around this side here, I'll give you a close look at the actual LED light and crab. Okay, down to the business end. Where the crab is, now basically, the octopus comes in, grabs it, bang, triggers off the door. That there's basically a water or pressure activated, water activated light so it's led light lasts for around about 60 days so plenty of time it's got the hard soft plastic crab there so very durable the idea behind this one here it emits basically a pulse every six seconds there that underwater any octopus that's in that area sees it comes in the trap whammo so very very durable basically what you do is you put it back in here slide into the position pull the string there which opens up the actual trap door lock it in position close the hatch as soon as it goes down below two metres of water, it starts pulsing overnight. All the octopus are on the move, moving base, they're quite transient, moving from basically different grounds, sand, weed, broken ground. They see the crab, they come in the pot, and then you get to take it home, that easy. All right, let's come up to it now, Harry. How's that wind, eh? Backing off just nicely, mate. Yeah, I love your work here, mate. I might not even need this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 throw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was some effort put in that one, mate. <laughs> yeah, you can put the rest, mate. Nah, you know how much hard work it was to do this part? <laughs> well, the, 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 the grapple part. Yeah, oh, mate. <laughs> oh, I've been grappling with it all week. <laughs> I'm just reminiscing, mate. I used to drop cray pots in 30 metres of water and pull it by hand. Now I'm using a stress-free uh, pot hauler. It's making life easy, but this 10 metre stuff is very easy. Then you got old. It's <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, I got very old. <laughs> Just some weight to it or what? Oh, I think Wa there is. Water weight? Water weight. Well, we've got a few anyway for a feed. Some people oh, keep the octopus as bait. Mate. Yeah, no worries. Some people keep it as bait. Me personally, I think this premium octopus is too good for bait. Well, unless I'm chasing KGs and I'll use it, but uh what we got in there. Empty mate. Empty? Alright, we're still on the same spot, mate. Throw it back in again, mate. Let's go get the next spot. Alright. Well after 14 years of people emailing me and phoning me and asking, do we have a tackle store? And I've always had to say no. Well, now we do have a tackle store, Fishing Western Australia Pro Tackle. And of course in here we carry all the extreme gear, which is our rods, line, leader, hooks, swivels, but that's not all. We also carry Fluger, Pen, Daiwa, Halco, and all the other major brands. So for all your tackle needs and advice, Come see us at Fishing Western Australia Pro Tackle, located at 7 Delamata Road, Wangara. This year we are giving away $2,000 worth of Extreme Tackle, as well as a Bradley 6 rack smoker valued at $1,200. To enter, all you have to do is like us on Facebook. Okay, last pot there, Harry. Last one, lucky last. Lucky last, mate. 
All right. Which means we'll probably get nothing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I like your work. Oh! Oh. <laughs> you idiot. That was pretty hard, mate. It's a bit strenuous here, mate. <laughs> Superb driving. Gotta love these uh, grapple hooks, eh? Really good for crayfishing. Hockey pots, doesn't matter. So handy. Unless you drive like me, where you don't need it, you just reach over. Bit of weight to it. I don't know, yeah, just pulling the boat over to it at the moment. <laughs> it's a bit like that, isn't it? Well, I must admit, mate, today has turned out just very nice. At least it's backed off, the sun's out. We're getting That's the feet it. of Oki. I must admit, I've been buying octopus from Fremantle Octopus for a while, but to actually go and catch your own and, and even cook it up yourself, it's also not bad, but I'm a little bit lazy, I'd rather buy it. Okay, go for it, mate. No. Give you uh, all right, lucky last there, Hazza. Oh, yeah, hang on that one there. She's heavy. Oh, she's always is that nut? heavy as I was hoping the trap doors were going to be down, but hey, that's just. No. I would always say that's fishing for you. Well, in this situation, that's okay. That, that's okay for you. <laughs> <laughs> just the way it is. I mean, then day you put it in cray pots. You want to get a few crays. You put it in oki pots. Get a few oki. Job done. Well, mate, I think that's it for us. Not quite, mate. We're going to go back. What well, I'm saying for on the water wise. On the water wise, yeah. We're going to go back and uh, see how these guys uh, jar it up, mate, and have a bit of a taste, I reckon. Absolutely. Big thanks to Mark Camilleri for coming out today. Now back to his factory and uh, see how they cook it, marinate it, and you know what? I'm getting a little bit peckish. Oh, yeah, we've been out here for how long? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, let's have a look. Fremantle Octopus specialise in octopus fishing and creating a range of marinated octopus. Their products are proudly made in WA and sold throughout Australia plus overseas. The whole process is very professional and well organised, I will say. All the octopus is brought in fresh by the local commercial Oki boats, then put in a deep freeze. Freezing octopus crystallises the water inside the Oki meat, which ultimately makes it more tender when defrosted. Once the octopus has naturally defrosted, it's placed on the steam racks with the suckers facing down. Steaming octopus not only cooks yaki, it also keeps all the good flavour and taste within. With plenty of new trays ready and waiting, the current batch inside the steamer needs to come out for the next part of the process. This industrial steamer can hold around 170 kilos of octopus and steaming time is about 30 minutes. Once the steam oki is double checked, it's placed in multiple tubs and ready for the cleaner. The cleaning machine sprays high pressure cold water to clean the steamed oki as it passes through. Once clean, the oki beaks are taken out and then the oki is placed in an ice slurry. The ice slurry stops any further cooking of the octopus, then after a short time it's ready for the process bench. The small octopus are cut into bite-sized pieces, whereas the larger oki goes straight into the cutting machine. This automatic cutting machine makes easy work on cutting the long tentacles into bite-sized pieces also. One thing that is very noticeable is that nearly every process is all about cleaning the octopus before it goes to the next stage. Quality control at Freeman Octopus is at the highest standard and a very clean factory Indeed. Once the correct weight is measured, the exact ingredients are put in and mixed through thoroughly. Large batches are made up at a time and everything is pre-measured for consistent results. The final process is to now fill up the various marinated jars with premium octopus. Well, that's it for me. A very quick tour through the Fremantle Octopus Factory and a bit of insight on marinated octopus. Mmm, yum. Well, Ryan, we've seen all the oki getting processed out there. Amazing process, just for some lovely, delicious oki. It is a foreign operation. Big thanks to Mark Camilleri for taking us through the actual whole process at Fremantle Octopus & Co. And how's this, mate? Marinated octopus for the five kilo down to the small jar, but how's that as well? Steamed octopus ready for the barbecue. 
And now that cheeky little 300 gram jar, mate. It is, it is a cheeky one. I think we'd have to give that one a go. But it's amazing how, I mean, it's all, all around the world. That's all right. Japan and New York and throughout Australia. Yeah, the local markets, IGA, yeah. and I think basically said most chains basically sell their octopus. Best thing about it, it's tender as and local product, even better. So well, let's find out how tender it is. Mate, <sighs> best thing about it, we get to take it all home as well. <laughs> We're just going to have to tell them we have to open up every single jar and try one piece. Yeah. Oh, sorry, it's open now. <laughs> <laughs> it's open. But no, Fremantle octopus is divine. Yeah, you go first in case mm. you kill over, mate. No, you're not like. <laughs> we actually bought some before from them. It's beautiful. I hope they go out this. That's so tender. Mm. So mm. there you go. Tender as, tasty. It's a huge process to get all the way down to basically that jar, but well worth it. So 300 grams to five kilos. The steam stuff, well, oh, mate, I think the day's done. The day is done. We've been underwater. We've been out here. We're hungry. <laughs> cracking for a beer and uh, yeah I think that's it for us mate. Well thanks for joining us we'll see you next time on Fishing WA.